Now let's assume that you have discovered that your airplane is the ultimate off-road vehicle and you're taking it to wild and woolly places like this. Well, let me ask you a question. According to the FAA, should you use your radio to land at an airport like this? And the answer is yes. If your airplane has a radio in it, the FAA wants you to use it. Why? So that you can get advisories and avoid running into other airplanes. <laughs> the FAA spends a, a lot of time concerned with the possibility that even at a place like this, you might run into another airplane. So they've set aside common traffic advisory frequencies and they show them on the chart with a little letter C inside a blue or magenta circle. The circle will either be blue or magenta depending on whether the airport has a part-time slant common traffic advisory frequency. In this case, it would part-time tower common traffic advisory frequency. In that case, it'd be blue or it does not have a tower as in this case and it's magenta. And the frequency here is 122.9er. Now let's take a look at another one of these. This is Tucumcari, New Mexico, one of my favorite places. And the frequency here is 122.9 or 5. And you see that little C surrounded by that shading there. And that tells you that that's the common traffic advisory frequency. And the FA says if you're going into a place, even a place this remote, they want you to use the radio and tell people what you'll be doing. Amarillo traffic, Cessna 38 Tango Bravo on the left base, 426 Bravo. Amarillo traffic, Cessna 38 Tango Bravo on final 26 Bravo. Now let's assume that you're inbound to an airport like this. Well, what they want you to do is start listening before you're 10 miles out and then make your first call on the common traffic advisory frequency 10 miles out. Now you announce your position and your intentions. You might say, Brego Valley traffic, Hawk 75, Niner Niner Romeo, 10 miles southeast for landing. We'll be entering right downwind, runway eight, Brego Valley. By the way, it's always nice to begin and end your calls with the name of the airport. It's probably a personal problem of mine, but I frequently miss the name of the airport at the start of the call. If the calling pilot repeats the name of the airport at the end of the call, I pick it up then. Now, when you get downwind, you'll want to announce your downwind. Brago Valley Traffic, Hawk 75, 909 Romeo, right downwind, runway 8, Brago Valley. Now, when you get to base leg, then you'd say Brago Valley Traffic, Hawk 75, 909 Romeo, right base, runway 8, Brago Valley. And finally, when you're on final, you'd say Brego Valley Traffic, Hawk 75, 909 Romeo, on final, runway 8, Brego Valley. And then you'd call them again when you're clear of the runway. You would say something like Brego Valley Traffic, Hawk 75, 909 Romeo, clear of runway 8, Brego Valley. And so they want you to start listening before you're 10 miles out. Call 10 miles out, call on downwind, on base, and on final and once again when you're clear of the runway. How about when you're departing that airport? Well, once again, use that radio. Listen for traffic before you start taxiing. Then call before taxiing and continue that listening watch on the radio. Brago Valley Airport, uh, Cessna 738 Tango Bravo, taking 08 at Brago straight out, departure. Call before taxiing on the runway and then monitor until you're 10 miles out. And that way, everybody knows what you're doing, and you'll be hearing other people in the vicinity. This is the beautiful state of Idaho. This is gorgeous country, and that is fun flying. And here is the airport for Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And let's take a look at this group of letters and numbers about the airport and go ahead and read through it for practice. Now, the airport is Coeur d'Alene, Boynton Field, and the three-letter identifier is COE. By the way, this is handy with the GPS because all you have to do is enter those letters and it will take you right to the airport. And we have AWOS 3, that's Automated Weather Observing System Type 3, and it observes the weather automatically and reports the weather to you continuously with a computerized voice. In this case, the frequency is 135.075. Now, in your airplane, your radio will just go to the .07, so you don't have to worry about the 5, but technically it's there. Automated weather observation 2204 Zulu weather. Wind 1 
niner zero at one three. Okay, the elevation of this airport is 2,320 feet, and there are lights at the edges of the runway, runway edge lights, but this asterisk tells you that there's some kind of limitation to the lights. Uh, maybe the lights don't work at all hours, or maybe it's pilot controlled lighting. You'd have to look in the airport facility directory to find out what the limitation to the lights is. And the length of the longest hard surface runway is 7,400 feet. And here's the question they're going to ask you on the written exam. What is this 122.8? Well, that letter C tells you that this is the common traffic advisory frequency. That is the handy dandy frequency you'd use to monitor traffic and self announce your positions and intentions. But you could also buy fuel on this. Do you think so? Yes, because it's a Unicom frequency. And that word Unicom tells you it's really maintained by the fixed base operator. Those are the people who do sell fuel. Now, how do you know that's a Unicom frequency if you don't remember it? Well, you can take a look at the airport facility directory. So here's the airport facility directory. And if you zoom in, you find it says communication CTAP slant Unicom and the frequency is 122.8. So when you find it says that CTAP frequency 122.8, it tells you that it's maintained by the fixed base operator because that's what Unicom means. Now, once again, those are the people who sell fuel, and you can call them on this frequency to order fuel. Let's do another one, and to do that, let's saunter over here to Jamestown in North Dakota, beautiful country some of the year. And the question is, what is the common traffic advisory frequency? Well, this C here tells you that 123.0 is the common traffic advisory frequency. Now, how about on the same chart, let's mosey over to Barnes County over here. And, and that would be area five on this chart. And once again, the common traffic advisory frequency in this case is 122.8. And this circle with a C tells you that is the common traffic advisory frequency. So this frequency is also what is known as the Unicom frequency. So the guy that sells gasoline might answer you on that frequency and might even give you advisories. But if he doesn't answer you, then you just transmit in the blind. That means no one in particular would be there to answer it. You're just going to talk to anybody who's in the area and listening. And to do that, you're using frequency 122.8. Now, you might get an answer from the Unicom operator, but once again, that's just the guy that sells gasoline. Let's do yet another one. And let's take a look at this chart, Area 3, and we're actually going to look at Curtick County Regional Airport. So here is the airport. And the frequency for the common traffic advisory frequency in this case, and the little c tells you it is, is 122.9. And now 122.9 is the frequency that is normally used at airports that don't have a Unicom. That means there is nobody on the ground to talk to you. So you just use this frequency, 122.9, to talk to other pilots. It's called the multi-com frequency. And what you would want to do is transmit your intentions on this frequency, 122.9, when you're 10 miles out, and give your position reports in the traffic pattern, just like you would using any other common traffic advisory frequency. Now, as we said, when you transmit without knowing who might be listening, it's referred to as transmitting in the blind. Now, just to make sure you have this down, let's do one more look at common traffic advisory frequencies. And to do that, let's take a look at this chart here. It's a Dallas area, area three. This is probably the most complicated sectional chart in the United States. But here we have the Dallas Executive Airport. And looking at Dallas Executive Airport, the CT tells you this is the control tower frequency, 127.25. And that asterisk or star tells you the operation of the control tower is not continuous. It probably shuts down at nighttime. Now here's the important part. This little circle with a C tells you that that is also the common traffic advisory frequency when the control tower is not in operation. Now what's the message you get from all of this? Well the message is if you're taking off or landing at an airport and your airplane has a radio in it, the FAA wants you to use that radio. Montgomery traffic, 4922 Delta on short final, full stop, Montgomery.